Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and today we have a special treat for you. Today we're going to be helping you pass your air brakes written exam for your CDL permit by giving you a list of different questions and I'm going to be explaining what the answers are and might be where you get these answers on the actual test itself. Wink, wink, if you know what I mean. So make sure you pay very close attention. If you have any questions throughout this, make sure you comment below. And if you know anybody who needs this information, make sure you share this information with them. We're always here to help you out. And Driving Academy is the best school around. So we have different videos on YouTube and all over the internet that can help you. But if you want the best training, you definitely want to give, us a, give our office a call, 908-525-3609. We're located in New Jersey and we have both online training courses as well as in-person training courses that you can get ready to pass the written exams for your CDL permit as well as their CDL road test. We're probably the only school around that can guarantee that you walk away with your CDL license. So if you want more information on that, give us a call 908-525-3609. So let's get right to it. So first question I have for you guys today is going to be, when going down a long or steep downgrade, you should always, and as you see the answers over here, the answer is going to be B. The uh, B is going to be use the braking effects of the engine. So what is the rule when going down long steep downgrades? So long steep downgrades means you're going down a hill, right? So you always want to use the braking effects of the engine and there's a few different ways that we can do that. One, you always want to go down the hill one gear lower than you came up in. So say for instance you went up in ninth gear, you want to be going down in eighth gear and you want to make sure you do your shifting at the top of the hill before you start going down. Two is you want to make sure you're running at a safe speed. So for instance, say the speed limit going down the hill is 55 miles an hour that means this is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to press on the brakes until you get to 50 miles an hour. Then you're going to come off the brakes, let the braking effects of the engine kind of help you out. And then it's going to rise up to 55 again, and then you just repeat that. So by making sure you're in the proper gear for that and making sure that you're only using the brakes to go less than five miles an hour, bring it back up to 55 in this example, and then you repeat it back to 50. So you're going to be going between 50 and 55 the entire way down of course according to the traffic flow. So that's number one. Number two, uh, the application air gauge shows the amount and the correct answer for this as you guys can see out of these four questions over here is going to be the amount of pressure currently being applied by the brake pedal. Now the application air gauge is not just a normal air gauge. So on some trucks they mix these two together we see the application air gauge and the air gauge together. On many trucks, however, there is no gauge and application air gauge on the dashboard itself. However, if you do have one, every time you press on the every time you press on the foot brake itself, the gauge is going to move and it's going to tell you exactly how much psi you just used by pressing your foot brake. Because every time you use your foot brake in the air brake system, you're actually using psi to stop. Right. So. Number three, the low air pressure warning will activate at approximately, out of these answers, the correct answer is going to be A, which is 60. So this is going to be part of your in-cab inspection and your air brake test to make sure your air brake test is working properly. Now, once your air pressure gets to 60 psi, there's supposed to be a warning light and buzzer that's warning you that, hey, you're getting low on air. If you get too low on air, that means that your brakes are going to lock up and you cannot move. And when you have 80,000 pounds of stuff that you're, that you're hauling and you cannot move, you're going to cause a big traffic jam, number one. And two, you're not going to get paid because you're only getting paid as a truck driver when those tires are turning. Question number four. If you experience a severe air loss and the service, and the service line system is no longer working, which brakes system is used to stop the vehicle? So out of these answers that you see over here, the correct answer is going to be the emergency brake system. So when all the air escapes, like we just said in the last example, and you have no air, that means that the springs will automatically pop up and the emergency system will engage, which means you cannot move the vehicle until you get air back into the system itself, which means you're going to have to fix that hose or fix that leak so the air compressor can pump things back in. Number five, air tanks should be drained at least out of these answers that you see here, the correct answer is daily. That's right. So why do we drain the air tanks daily and how do we do it? It's just a simple valve. You turn it, you're going to see air coming out. And if there's water on the bottom of the tank, you're going to see a mist. You don't have to drain it all the way. You just have to drain it until the mist disappears because once you get closer to the winter months 
and there's air and there's moisture in there because of the condensation that happens if that water freezes it's going to lock up all the airlines which means air cannot go through your airlines and that means you cannot release your brakes which means you're stuck for the day and you have to go underneath there with the blowtorch and doing that in 20 degree weather is no fun so just drain your air tanks at the end of the day and you'll always be able to start up and get ready to rock and roll number six alcohol evaporators so uh, an alcohol evaporator is what and the correct answer is a injects alcohol into the air lines to help prevent freezing so same type of reason why we drain the air tanks in very very cold climates what you can actually do is insert alcohol into the air lines itself and alcohol does not freeze this is not alcohol that you drink however because you are a professional driver right but you're gonna put it through the airlines your trucks gonna drink it up and make sure that there's no freezing happening so your brakes are gonna work Number seven, the air compressor governor determines what? So the governor determines the cut in and cut out of the pressure, which is letter C in this example. So the easiest way to do that is the air compressor governor is the governor or the boss, just like the governor of your state is the boss of your state and tells people when to go to work and when not to go to work. So a lot of governors in this past COVID era, they said, hey, you can stay home. You gotta go to work since you're essential same type of system here the governor tells the air compressor when to work when not to work and it tells you it tells them by knowing how much air is in the tanks because it's once the air tanks are full you don't want your air compressor to keep pumping more air into the tanks or else things bad things can happen so that governor's job is to say hey we're full we don't need any more air shut it off and that's what it does now number eight if you experience a sudden drop in in the air system you should do what so out of these answers, the best one is going to be stop immediately when safe to do so. So same type of situation, if you're driving along and all of a sudden you see your air pressure gauge start to drop dramatically, now what should you do? Because you don't want to get stuck in the middle of the highway with stopping a whole bunch of traffic, you want to get over to the side before you're not able to move anymore and make sure you assess the situation because if you have no air, you cannot move and we already told you why that's wrong. Number nine is going to be at approximately 20 to 45 PSI, what's going to happen? So that's going to be letter B, which is the same type of situation that we had before. The spring brakes will automatically apply. So between 20 to 45 PSI, that means that you really have pretty much no air inside the system at all. And that means that the emergency brakes are going to kick in, which means those spring brakes are going to apply and you cannot move. So it all, pretty much all, a lot of these questions are all about, hey, as long as air is going through and you don't have any leaks, you're good. As long as you, if you see anything that's wrong, pull over to the side, try to fix it. Number 10, the vehicle equip, vehicles equipped with air brakes must have what? And the correct answer is gonna be B, an air pressure gauge. So if you're gonna have air brakes, you're gonna need a gauge inside on your dashboard itself. It's gonna tell you how much air pressure you actually have in your air tanks or else you don't know if you're gonna have too much, too little, and you have no idea how to operate this whole thing. So super, super important. Air brakes, any, any vehicle with air brakes must have an air gauge. One of the common misconceptions is that all CDL vehicles have air brakes, and that is incorrect. All you need to be a CDL vehicle is be more than 26,000 pounds. So there's some, certain buses out there that are CDL class Bs, which means they weigh more than 26,000 pounds and they do not have air brakes, they have hydraulic brakes, they're still considered a CDL vehicle, just to give you a heads up. But if you're gonna be taking this test, you're gonna be qualified to drive air brake vehicles as well as any other vehicles after that. And the last one that we're gonna do for today's video is going to be number 11. When a driver depresses the brake pedal, what air brake system is being used? So in this case, the correct answer is service system, the service brakes. Now, in the truck itself, there's only two brake systems. You're gonna have your service brake system and your emergency brake system. We talked a lot in this video already about your emergency brake system, which happens in case of an emergency. And in case of emergency, what do you wanna do? Go or stop? Stop, right? So in this case, an emergency means that, you, that you're losing a dramatic amount of air. The emergency brakes will automatically stop your vehicle. The service brakes, however, is used every time you press on your foot brake. So if you wanna press on your foot brake, air is going through the system to stop the vehicle itself, going through the brake chamber, so on and so forth. If you want more details on that, we have other videos that explain that in super, super detail. So service system is gonna be any time that you use your foot brake itself. 
I hope this helped you out. These were 11 questions and answers. Some of them might pop up on your test, and I hope that you get yourself on your road to freedom. If you want more training just like this, these are just a few of the things that we give. This is just a few things that we give you. We give our students a whole lot more stuff. And one of the cool things about our students is we don't just give them questions and answers like this for them to memorize because that doesn't really teach them how to get that CDL license and how to be a professional driver. If all you're doing is memorizing questions and answers, you're doing okay and you might be able to pass a test or you might not because if they change one of the questions in this test, the whole thing is going to be different. So we teach our students exactly what the CDL manual teaches and we tell you exactly what you're going to need in real life and we get rid of all the fluff from there. So now you know the knowledge, so you're going to be a safer driver, but also when it comes to taking the test, it does not matter which question they ask, you're going to be prepared and you're going to be able to pass. Our online training course or classroom training course to get you ready for the permit has a 95% success rate the very first time you take the test. All you got to do is follow along and get ready to rock and roll. If you're interested in getting yourself a CDL license and you're looking for a school, look no more. Here at Driving Academy, we can definitely help you out. If you want information on that, we're located in Linden, New Jersey currently. We have plans to expand nationwide. And give us a call, 908-525-3609, or check out our virtual school tour at cdldrivingacademy.com forward slash tour, cdldrivingacademy.com forward slash tour. I don't usually do this often because this is pretty much giving you guys information that people pay us to do all the time. So I'm giving you a sample for free. All you have to do to let me know that you like this kind of stuff, give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and comment below saying how much this helped you out. Thanks, and have a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.